for generator one. Yeah, be careful of these wires back here, guys, please. Oh. Hold on, Eric, can I make sure everything is preset? Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, where's my Kimbo? Hi. <laughs> you want to see this car? Uh, first of all, you have to understand that when I was in Michigan developing the Dynaflux, it occurred to me that there is this extra magnetic energy that is not being used. And I tried my best to figure out a way to accomplish the capture of that. Uh, this generator, which we call a transforming generator, uh, this, this machine is designed in such a way that uh, it incorporates in one geometry both the physical parameters of a generator with the transformer. The, the way it looks inside is, is like this. Now I showed you pictures before of this arrangement. Now this this coil talks to that coil magnetically, just like a transformer, but the rotor creates the power in both. So, the thing that makes this so very interesting is that when you play this game, as opposed to the normal way it's done, you can you can access the power that's in the current without the voltage being involved directly. The first demonstration that I want to make on this machine to, to bring out that point is going to involve this little switch. Now, if you look at the wiring here, you see that one, one set of coils comes directly to this lamp and this switch. The other set goes straight to this bulb. When I close the switch this way, it's a short circuit across this coil. Now, what, what I'm going to show you is two demonstrations in one. The first one is going to be the demonstration of the transformer effect. And the second one, you have to understand, we don't yet have the electronic regulator for this. It's very important to have that because this thing can destroy itself very easily. The reason that it can do that, if we're not careful, is because all that extra energy, once, it's, once we go to this mode where we change the fields, like I was telling you about in there, this starts to run as a mode. <laughs> And we have to be very careful because it takes off like hell and it can destroy itself. So, so, so the regular the, uh, the regular heat in there, what does that do? Well, when, when we have it, it'll do two things. It'll adjust the fields in here to bring about that effect. But it will also be linked with the controls for the motor so that the minute it starts to unload, it will drop the motor consumption. So now, now the motor will pull practically nothing except cover the loss of it. In a small way.
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'll bring this thing up to speed. It's going to be spinning at 3,600 RPM. I don't want anybody standing in line with this coupling in case something breaks. Oh. Yeah, maybe this fan as well. What do you think, Jim? Oh, that's got a short. Okay. Watch out here. Watch out. So what you said, Johnny, got it. Yeah. Um, we don't have power here, folks. Okay. <laughs> we can bring it hot. Huh? We might have plugged uh, plugged in. Yeah. Plugged in. I might not. You know, it might be a. Oh, oh, there it was. It was turning a little bit. Yeah, but I got no. I got no. Deal. Oh wait. It'll it'll come on. It's alright. Right. Here we okay. go. Yeah, it's coming. All right. It starts to take off like a motor, um, and that's why you need to have the the regulator to immediately cut the power back. Oh shit! I just put the breaker for you. Yeah, I know, but we, we we threw the fields up. Okay. Oh, that that means that the polarity of the motor reversed when it collapsed. Okay. So I'm gonna have to have you switch. Let me see. Oh no, it's it's back. Okay. All right, I'll bring it up again and I'll show you that thing because when, when I pulse this switch, take the load off and put it back, 
the, the position of the rotor will have a chance to change before that magnetic field reestablishes, and it will temporarily convert this into a motor, but it's, it takes off, and I have to kill it right away. The deal might be up a bit, Jim, but that's all right. Maybe 105 volts, Jim. So what we would do normally, the minute that speed starts to pick up, the power in this has to be lowered. Automatic regulator. And then what would happen, of course, is that ultimately you get this just right, all that the prime mover has to do is cover the frictional losses. Now, in the back of this case, in this video, this is small. It can be a small machine or it can be a bigger machine, depending if you want to use an engine over here or a little bit over here. I don't really know the exact value of this. You don't have a good measure. I'm guessing this is going to be 1.5 million. There's no copper over here yet. So one of the first things we have to do is we have to we have to design one that's got the full windings. And then I have to make different rotors to make sure I can serve the same effect in, in both situations. Because we can do a two-pole rotor or a four-pole rotor. This machine now is only two-pole. Touching the wires together. 
So then the, the current is flowing in this side. It's not doing anything. It's just flowing. But the magnetism gets coupled over to the other side and adds value. <laughs> See, right now, nobody gives attention to the fact that the current by itself can carry power. Because every time you use current under normal conditions, and even if you don't have a voltage, it creates the voltage. But in this arrangement, it only creates magnetism. Then that magnetism couples to the other coil and puts the energy away. Now that's the same principle we're going to use in the little toroid thing for the other device. We're going to we're going to chain the other. That's what I was thinking too. This is the one that So, uh, at the moment, that's all she can do, but once we get the bigger ones built, I'm sure you'll see more. Okay, this is a machine that we call the transforming generator and the reason for that is because this machine actually incorporates uh, two separate technologies in one embodiment. It's um, both a generator and a transformer. And in order to demonstrate that and then explain why it's useful, I'm going to run this device for you and produce a, an interesting little experiment here. The, um, the main reason I built it was actually to study the difference between EMF and voltage. Now I know that um, most people think that they're the same, but they're not. Uh, an EMF is called electromotive force. That's the force that pushes current. And the current passing through an impedance, which could be a resistor, a capacitor, or inductor, or whatever, uh, actually the pressure of the charge that cannot flow through the impedance simultaneously is what develops the phenomenon that we call voltage. So it's okay to use them interchangeably for certain calculations when you understand what you're doing, like in the application of Kirchhoff's laws for studying mesh and node equations, but there are times when you really have to keep them segregated and so I built this particular machine to allow me to concentrate on the force aspect of this separately from the voltage aspect. Now a lot of the results of that are proprietary. I'm not going to go into the details, but I will show you a couple of interesting features and we'll use that to further the explanation of the machine. Uh, first of all, there are two sets of windings in this machine. One set is brought out on this pair of, of lines and the other set is brought out on this pair of wires. Now this, these two conductors go directly to this 300 watt bulb. The ones from this side 
do not come directly to this bulb. They go through this little selector switch, this little um, knife switch that's down here. One side of that knife switch has a copper bar across it, which essentially constitutes a short circuit. The other side will allow the, the connection to be made to this bulb. It's important to understand that ahead of time so that you can grasp the significance of the demonstration. So with that, I'm going to, um, I'm going to bring this guy up to speed. I'll be using a um, RPM meter to set the high end of the um, RPM so that we don't blow any fuses. about 2200 RPM and that's going to be sufficient to demonstrate what I have to show you. So the next thing we're going to do is turn up the field on the generator so that it starts producing a voltage. You'll notice a glow will appear in that lamp over there when we reach a certain setting. There it's starting to glow now. I'm going to take this meter and we're going to do a couple of voltage measurements just so I can make a point. First I'm going to turn the lamp off. So now there's no load on that particular winding. We have 59.2 volts, almost 60 volts. Now if I turn this lamp back on, when we get the glow again, hopefully we will get the glow again. Now that we have the glow, we take the voltage measurement and you see that we only have 15.7 volts actually appearing across that lamp, 15.6, okay? So, most people would say, well, we just had 60 volts there. Where did the other 45 go? It's actually sitting inside the generator across the windings in a phenomenon known as inductive reactants. It's actually consuming that other, that other amount of uh, voltage so that it cannot reach the lamp. Now, normally, in a, in a standard generator, the way they get around that is they have a whole series of windings and they connect them all together. This machine only has two windings and I'm going to be able to put the full production voltage into that lamp just by making a slight change in the circuitry. You notice all the controls are underneath. I'm not going to touch a thing under there. So the setting on the field is going to remain absolutely the same. But I am going to close this little switch as I mentioned to you before and we're going to go first to the short circuit, which is a co copper bar that's placed across the output of this switch. That's going to cause a current to flow in this winding, which will change the magnetic coupling coefficients between this coil and that coil, and it's going to release the full potential of that coil into the lamp. See that? Now the interesting thing is that this side of the coil to that side appears as a capacitor and that's the reason it can do that. It actually resonates that winding, which means it gets rid of all of its resistance to the total amount of flow of electricity. But if I put this to this side, you notice now both lamps come on and that's because this side opens that side of the generator and this side opens this side of the generator allowing the total amount of power that's being created to flow into the lamps. Now, 
has some very special uh, reasons for investigating this kind of thing, most of which have to do with the way I've designed a lot of the equipment in this room. But I wanted to demonstrate that in particular because it's a very fundamental concept and it will appear in every single machine that you're going to see throughout the course of this demonstration. I'll now shut down. Please click on the link below the video to watch the full content. If you are interested,